Hey everyone, I built a better trigger circuit for my flash tube stuff that I'm going to use for the Ruby laser project. So I thought I'd show you how I did it and what sort of flash tubes I can trigger with it. So here's the setup. I've got this electrophoresis power supply charging up the capacitor bank there to about 1200 volts. And the capacitor bank is connected directly across the flash tube, kind of like this. So the capacitors that I'm just representing with one symbol here are wired directly up to the flash tube. And we can do this because uh, 1200 volts is not enough to break down that xenon gas in the flash tube and actually create a flash or a discharge. What we need is a trigger pulse, and the trigger is actually just a piece of wire that's wrapped around the outside of the flash tube. And if we put a really fast rising edge, high voltage pulse on that trigger line, it will ionize the, gla uh, the gas through the glass of the flash tube and then lower the resistance and suddenly all of that power that's uh, in the capacitor bank can discharge through the flash tube. The trick is that if your flash tube is very long, uh, you need a very high triggering voltage to ionize all of that gas in there. So this particular flash tube over here is actually relatively easy to trigger. Um, very small flash tubes are even easier to trigger just because there's less gas and less distance between the electrodes. So for something like this little toy flash tube project, uh, the trigger transformer can be quite small. This might take an input of 50 to a few hundred volts and output, you know, single digit kilovolts. For a professional flash unit, uh, there's a slightly larger uh, flash transformer or trigger transformer. This one probably takes a few hundred volts in and generates maybe 10 or 20 kV. However, the circuit that I built is quite a bit more powerful. I'm using a automotive ignition coil and dumping a 300 volt cap into it. And this generates about three centimeter long sparks, which should correspond to about 90 kV. I need this high voltage uh, in order to trigger these large flash tubes that I have for the Ruby laser project. Here's the basic circuit diagram. We've got a 300 volt rail coming in from the smaller electrophoresis power supply. And this resistor is about 16 K ohm uh, just to let the supply know that there's something there. These electrophoresis power supplies are sometimes reluctant to start unless there's a load connected. Uh, then I added this diode just to try to keep uh, high voltage pulses from backing up into the supply and this resistor limits the charge rate of the main capacitor. I think this capacitor is about 300 microfarads at 350 volts. Uh, the trigger circuit couldn't be simpler, it's really just a switch, and I put another smaller cap across the switch just to try to keep down destructive voltages should those uh, be generated across the switch. And uh, closing the switch dumps that capacitor right into the induction coil, or the uh, ignition coil, and we end up with a high voltage pulse out. In this case, the trigger line is that mesh of wire wrapped around all the um, flash tube in there, and I've connected to it with this high voltage 30 kV uh, silicone wire that goes into the ignition coil inside here. So all you have to do to run it is just press the button, and we get a nice flash out of it. And I've also got my uh, high speed pin photodiode over there connected to the oscilloscope so we can see what the pulse of light looked like. Uh, in terms of duration. So to figure out the amount of energy per flash, we've got uh, 1 half CV squared. Uh, C is 180 microfarads. Those are those two strings of capacitors that I have wired up. And the voltage is actually 1200 minus 150, which is the residual that's left in the capacitor bank after it fires. And so we end up with about 100 joules. Um, from the scope, we can see that about uh, sixty six percent of this energy is 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 um, shot off in about two hundred seventy five microseconds, and then knowing that we can figure out what the effective resistance of the flash tube is, and we get about an ohm and a half, which is uh, that 's reasonable um, for flash tubes. The effective resistance actually depends on the amount of current going through the flash tube so there 's this uh, k constant that describes what the effective resistance is depending on the on the current flow. Um, in this case, the current flow is probably not all that much since it's a relatively low power pulse. In order to discharge the capacitor bank, what I do is shut off the supply, and then I have this 3300 ohm thick film capacitor, which I can touch to the terminal here and draw a little arc off. And this will actually discharge the bank slowly enough where it's uh, easy to deal with. 
Okay, so next time I'll have the real flash tube that I'm going to be using with the Ruby laser hooked up. It's uh, quite a bit bigger than this one even, and hopefully it will be uh, triggering reliably with that new larger trigger circuit. Okay, see you next time. Bye.